Hi, I'm Oliver and I'm the creator of Backbone on Doob.js and I'm going to show you how it works and what's so cool about it. Backbone on Doob.js is a very simple undo manager for Backbone.js and the cool thing is that you don't really have to change your app usually at all and you just need a few lines of code and you're done. So how does that work? Uh, the principle of Backbone on Doob.js is that you register the objects uh, whose changes you want to undo and redo and the undo manager then observes these objects and listens to the events they trigger. On every event it creates a before and after state and stores it internally as an undo action in an undo stack. So this is how Backbone Undo.js works and as you can see the major advantage is that it makes extensive use of Backbone's own mechanisms. So events, functions like previous attributes to get the before state, etc. And that way it's able to do a lot on its own, which is the reason why it's so simple. So let's try it out then. You probably know the site to todomvc.com. This is a site that presents a whole range of JavaScript-based MVC frameworks with uh, to-do lists as sample applications. And of course, uh, it also has a sample application for Backbone.js. So I'm loading the source code down. Unzip it. The Backbone to do application is under Architecture Examples Backbone. Now, when we open the index.html file, you can see it's the application. We can write to do's in here by food for the cat. Don't forget the dog. Uh, we can change them and a cracker for Polly. Mark them as done and remove them from the list. So far there's no undo functionality. There's no undo button and if we press Control Z uh, nothing happens. That's what we're going to change. I'm inserting a Backbone and Do.js and a key binding manager uh, in the directory. Uh, this is a key binding manager I have written, jQuery Shortcut JS, but you can use anyone or none at all if you don't want to use shortcuts. So this is not a dependency and um, yeah, it's all up to you. I'm gonna edit the index file now. I insert uh, Backbone and Do.js and jQuery Shortcut JS. To create an undo manager, we have to instantiate Backbone undo manager. So uh, var undo manager is new backbone undo manager. Uh, we could pass arguments to the constructor, but um, for now we're not doing that. Uh, we get to that later in the video. If you take a deeper look at the to-do application, you can see that all the required objects are properties of the app object. This is uh, globally accessible and in this app namespace we have the to-dos object. This is where the data is. This is not a constructor function unlike uh, all the other properties of the app namespace. This is the actual list and this is what we need. We are registering this list with our undo manager. 
Now, uh, Backbone and DJS won't observe the object yet. Uh, we have to explicitly tell it that the object is ready to be observed. And we're doing that by calling undo manager start tracking. So from here on, changes are tracked. Now we only need to uh, bind that to our shortcuts. So I'm going to do jQuery shortcut on command Z, meter Z. Undo manager, undo. And on meter shift Z, undo manager, redo. Let's save that. Uh, that's it really. Now let's uh, try that out and create some to-dos again. I'm gonna do the same thing I just did. So first to do buy food for the cat. Don't forget the dog. And not only buy food for, for the cat, but a cracker for Polly, the budgie. And we can mark them as done and we can remove them from the list. And now I hit Command Z, Command Z, Command Z, Command Z and Command Z. So undo works, now let's redo some changes by hitting Command Shift Z, Command Shift Z, Command Shift Z. You may have noticed that when we were undoing the removal of the to-dos, they were inserted uh, in the wrong order. Now this is because the app view just appends new to-dos to the list and doesn't keep track of the actual index where in the list they should be placed. So there's potential to tweak the app here and there to improve how it works together with the undo manager. But the bottom line is that we implemented an undo manager in just a few lines of code. Here we have them, three lines of code. And uh, if I hadn't talked so much, in just a few seconds. And we didn't even touch the original code, so I think that's pretty cool. And this is why I call Backbone and DoJS an extremely simple undo manager. Let's get to the next demo. This is a text area that uh, stores its content in a uh, Backbone model every now and then, roughly after every word. Uh, now you might think, wait a second, uh, text areas already have an undo manager, a native one. Um, that's true, we just ignore that for this demonstration. So uh, the model the text area saves its content to is globally accessible again, of course. And um, it's a property of the window object called demo text area. So now let's implement an undo manager for that. Again, we instantiate Backbone Undo Manager. And I just said that uh, you can pass an argument to the constructor function. Um, if you already have the objects you want to register with the Undo Manager, you don't have to call the register function. You can uh, pass them directly on instantiation. You pass an object literal with the attribute register and we assign it to our demo text area. Now if you have more than one object to register, uh, you can also pass an array of objects. And if you don't have to modify these objects anymore, if they're already set up and ready to be tracked, then you can just pass track true. So this is the shortened way. Uh, we don't have to call the register and the start tracking function anymore. We're doing this on instantiation. 
Um, so this is even shorter than what I've just showed you with the uh, to do app. Now we need to call the undo and uh, redo function somehow. There are already undo and redo buttons in the site and I'm just going to register a click listener on these two buttons. So when the undo button is clicked, the undo function should be called. And with the redo button, the redo function should be called. So let's check that out. Um, go to our demo, refresh it, and let's type something. Hello world, uh, how are you today? Uh, get back to me. Hugs and kisses. No, please get back to me. Now I click the undo button and you can see what happens. And the same thing with redo. It just works. It's really simple. However, you might run into some complications and this is what I want to show you with the next demo. This is a tag list. You can write a tag down below here. This is a tag. Uh, hit enter and it's added to the list. I've already implemented an undo manager here so we can call undo and redo. And it's gonna remove the tag and add it again back to the list. So far so good. Now we can also add several tags to the list at once. Let's do that. These are multiple tags. They are added to the list. Now if I want to undo that, this happens. They were added to the list at once, but I can't remove all of them at once. Now why is that? As I just said, Backbone Undo.js creates undo actions from events. That's its principle. When you add several models to a collection, several events are triggered. And your undo manager creates an undo action from every single one. This is the reason why it behaves this way. Why it's undoing not all at once, but each for itself. Now, this is not just a side issue. This happens not just with collections. You can have that in any app. The user clicks something and the app doesn't just change one thing, but several things. Uh, you can't expect the user to undo several actions when in fact he just did one thing. That's not intuitive or logical. So that's why Backbone and Do.js comes with a feature called Magic Fusion. And what it does is this. It automatically detects which undo actions belong together and is able to undo and redo all of them at once. Now the wet magic might scare you off a little, but it's really, really careful in what it assumes belongs together. And if you dig into the code, you see how it works. Um, you're going to realize that it's solid and usable. Uh, however, it's still an opt-in and not turned on by default. To use Magic Fusion, you just have to pass true to the undo and redo function. It's just as simple as everything else. Let's draw that out again. Um, I hit refresh and I'm gonna add several tags at once again and other tags at once. Now let's undo this and voila, Magic Fusion has figured out which actions to undo together. As a rule of thumb, you should just always activate Magic Fusion when you bind the undo or redo function to something the user triggers, so buttons or shortcuts or anything like that. Now, before I show you the advanced functionality, I want to give you a quick background story. Um, I developed Backbone on Do.js for an application I created for my bachelor thesis. 
Uh, this is some kind of Keynote-ish, Photoshop-ish or InDesign-ish uh, application. It's a document editor, basically. And it's web-based, of course, so it runs in a web browser. Uh, it's also based on Backbone.js. When I developed this application, I was looking for an undo manager I could easily implement, and I didn't really want to implement it deeply into the code, um, because I wanted to lose coupling and everything, obviously. Um, I knew Backbone, and I knew that it had those methods like previous attributes and so on, so I had this principle in mind of an undo manager that makes use of this, uh, so that you don't really have to add much code at all, but I was unable to find one. There were either just general JavaScript undo managers, so not particularly made for Backbone, uh, or two undo managers made for Backbone, but they were both based on the memento pattern. And so I was like, uh, okay, well then I'm going to do it myself. And that's how Backbone and Do.js came about. So I used it in my application, as I just said, and as you might tell, this is not a simple application. This is quite the rich web application. So during development, I realized that a memento-based uh, undo manager might be more powerful. However, I stuck to my backbone undo JS and extended its capabilities and eventually it worked. Uh, the undo manager in this application is powered by Backbone Undo JS, so you can see it is possible. But if you have a large scale web application and you're currently looking for an undo manager, you might rather take an undo manager based on the memento pattern. Backbone Undo JS is extremely simple, but it's also rather suitable for simple applications. You can try it out because as you could see, it's very easy to implement, but it might not suit your needs. So that said, now I'm going to show you the advanced functionality I implemented to make it work for my document editor. As I've already said, the undo actions that are stored in the undo stack are created from events. Uh, this sounds like a generic job, like some transformation of events into undo actions, but this is of course not the case. You can't apply the same function you use for a change event uh, to a reset or add event. They get totally different arguments and they serve different purposes. So internally, Backbone and Do.js has different functions for different types of events. And those are called undo types. Let's have a look at how an undo type is structured. Every undo type needs to have three functions, on, undo and redo. The on function is called when the event is triggered and it's uh, responsible for retrieving and returning the data we need to undo and redo the action. If the on function doesn't return the necessary data, the undo manager won't create an undo action. The undo function is, of course, for undoing the action, so for restoring the original state, and the redo function is for reversing that and restoring the new state. Let's have an example. Let's implement the undo type for reset. Uh, the reset function gets the collection and an options object as arguments. Uh, we must return an object with the necessary data, and that is the object which caused the event, the before state, the after state, and optionally an options attribute. And yeah, we don't need to return any options, but we do it in this example. So the object that triggered the event is the collection. Uh, we can retrieve our before state from the options object because there we have options previous models. Our after state is the list of current models. Now make sure not to just return a reference but a copy of it, so I'm cloning it here. As options we just pass our options object. The undo function is called with object, before, after and options. So all the data we returned in the on function uh, our object is, of course, our collection, so let's rename that. 
To undo a reset, we just need to replace the current models with the previous models. The redo function is called with the same arguments. Again, the object argument is our collection. And here we just do the opposite and reset the collection with the models from the after state. Now, optionally, you can set a condition property that decides whether the on function gets called at all. It's always true by default. You can set it to false if you want to prevent undo actions from getting created. Uh, you can also set this to a function. Um, this function gets the same arguments like the on function, so uh, it can check the arguments and then decide if an undo action should be generated or not. Now you might already have noticed it. This is it. This is where the magic happens. These undo types are the very heart of Backbone Undo JS. So while developing my application, I realized I needed access to these undo types. And that's what I want to show you in the third and last demonstration. This is an app where you have colored planes and you can move them around, resize them, and add new planes and do the same thing with them. Let's implement an undo manager for that. So again we instantiate our undo manager. We start tracking right away. Track true. And we register demo editor our collection. By the way uh, you just need to register a collection, not every single uh, model of it, because we just need the uh, events, and the events, the models trigger, are delegated uh, by the collection. So, um, yeah, that that's totally sufficient. We bind our um, undo and redo function to our undo and redo buttons. So, undo button click calls undo manager undo and redo button click calls uh, undo manager redo of course we um, activate magic fusion again and now let's see what happens I'm dragging some planes around and I'm resizing them and I add one and I undo this this works and I undo that and what's that nothing happens okay so you can see it looks like slow motion or something the undo manager doesn't undo the entire drag but every single step of it this is of course because your undo manager doesn't know that all these changes are part of a long ongoing action and even Magic Fusion can't help us with this because it's just undoing what happens at once and these changes don't happen at once, they happen one after another with a few milliseconds in between. So what can we do about that? That's where those undo types come into play. What we expect when we hit undo and redo is uh, that it undoes and redoes the complete move or the complete resize at once, not step after step. So when I begin to move a plane, that's when it should grab the data and store it as the before state. And when I end the move, that's when it should create the after state. And this is when the undo action should be created so that it has the before and after state. So how do we do that? We could use the condition property here. Um, Let's set it to fault for now to see what happens. So this is backbone undo manager change undo type. And um, this is the function. The undo type we want to change is the one of the change event. And we set its condition property to false. Now what's going to happen?
Nothing. The moves and recesses are model changes, so they trigger the change event. We've just deactivated the undo type for change, so we can't undo these changes. However, we can still undo adding new planes to the collection. Because that is carried out by the undo type for the add event, and we didn't modify that one. So that's something. Now we could use a function as our condition property and somehow figure out when an action starts and when it ends and only return true then and false in between or something. So uh, we could do it like that. But I'm going to take a different approach here. Let's remove the change undo type altogether. So instead of change undo type, I say remove undo type and we don't need that. Instead, I'm adding a new one. The models of these planes have an attribute called is changing, and that is set to true during a move and resize, and uh, it's false otherwise. So, um, whenever this attribute is changed, a change event is triggered for it, and I'm just going to lock that here. v is uh, the value of is changing. So let's have a look. It's only triggered at the beginning and the end of an action because that's when the value changes. We're gonna use that. We add a new under type for this specific event. And of course we have to implement the uh, the functions again. So there we have the on function. It gets the arguments uh, that are triggered when an attribute change happens. So that is model and the value of is changing. Now when an action begins is changing is true. So here we are when an action begins. We need to get the model's data and store it. So um, let's create a new variable before state outside the scope. And we store the model's attributes in here. Model to JSON. Now, when an action ends, is changing is false, so that's else then. And this is where we want to get an undo action created, so here we return an object with the properties object, no, object, which is our model, the before state, which is our before state, and the after state with which is the model's current data. We don't need to add the options property. Uh, now let's implement the undo function. It gets the model, the before state, and uh, the after state as arguments. Uh, we don't need the options argument, that's uh, that's why I'm leaving that out. Uh, all we have to do now is set the model to the before state. The redo function works quite similarly. It gets the same arguments. And here we set the model to the after state and we're done so let's try it out let's undo that and it works just like we expected it to work now the functions we used to add change and uh, remove the undo types were global functions 
we call it on the uh, on the backbone undo manager object not the undo manager instance however you can use the same api on an instance and it won't have global effects now why would you want to do that let's get back to this document editor again as i said this isn't a simple app the uh, under manager here doesn't just observe one object like in all the examples i showed you it observes several ones when I began modifying the undertypes to adapt them to uh, specific needs of particular objects, they had, of course, effects on the other objects as well. So I was fiddling around trying to solve that by checking which object is currently the one that triggered the event and how to behave then, and I had a lot of distinctions to make. And guess what? I realized this won't work in the long run. This is just not maintainable and so I came up with another solution multiple undo managers you have an undo manager for just one or two objects and you create special undo types only for that undo manager that's why you can use the uh, undo types API on a specific instance the thing is with multiple undo managers you have multiple undo stacks so where should you call undo and redo on, right? We need these undo managers to write on only one stack and this is what the merge function is for. You can merge your special undo managers into a main undo manager and they will add the undo actions they create to the stack of the main undo manager. So that's how you can keep them apart from each other and that solves this fiddling around so these are the advanced features this is how you can make it work for larger applications and uh, once you've understood the the concept of undo types it's actually pretty simple again and uh, with creating several undo managers and merging them into one uh, you get a lot of power so the bottom line is backbone and dojs is extremely simple and very easy to set up and it's also quite capable if you use the advanced functionality. Um, that's it. That was the extensive introduction to Backbone and Do.js. This was a complete overview over all the features. So you're ready to use it now. You can try out the demos yourself um, on backboneundojs.com or just undojs.com. You'll be redirected. There's also the source code to all the demos and everything I explained in this video is written here too. Uh, you can download the file with and without comments and you um, got a link to the GitHub repository here. In the GitHub repository you have a complete overview of the API so check that out. Um, yeah, I hope Backbone on Do.js can help you. It's at least what I wanted when I was looking for a Backbone-based Undo Manager. Uh, however, it's still rather young, so you may find bugs. But you're welcome to help developing it, of course. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. Try it out. Thanks for listening. Bye.